Hello and welcome back to another out of spec detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Behind me we have a brand new Tesla Model 3 Performance and this is actually my dad's car. Huge congrats to him for taking delivery of this. He is loving it so far. But I wanted to make a build quality video with this, seeing how Tesla is doing as a ramping up production. As you guys probably know, the price discounts they have put on these cars, tax incentives, these things are going to be absolutely everywhere. So I wanna see how these cars are actually looking um, as far as build quality. So today we're gonna to be going through full exterior fit and finish, interior as well. We're gonna look at the paint, see how the paint is actually looking. Are there a bunch of dust nibs everywhere? How are these coming delivered? They have tons of scratches. What's going on with the paint? And we're also gonna take some paint readings to see how consistently these things are looking. Really excited for this one. Let's jump into it. So here it is, a pearl white Model 3 Performance on white interior. This car as is now with a new um, price reduction on these, this is $54,990. Now I know that sounds like a lot of money, but you're getting so much car for that. And I think that's really important, um, especially in the car market, because I think all car prices have really been overinflated, especially Tesla's. Um, but with that, I think you're gonna be seeing a lot of people jumping into EVs and, you know, Model 3 Performance is one of those that just does everything so well. But let's start walking around the car here and see how everything's put together. My kind of concern, you know, from a detailer's perspective is, okay, we've got a lot more demand now. They're trying to crank these cars out. I'm really anxious to see what are these things actually looking like. He got this car, I believe, right at 28 days after placing order. He just took delivery yesterday. Pretty freaking insane how quickly they were able to put that together. So let's start on the hood here and see how panel gaps alignment is actually looking. I would say so far this hood looks really nice and tidy down um, the side here compared to the quarter panel. Headlights also look like they're really nicely done. Now I will say here on the front end, this looks a little tight. As you notice, um, these panel gaps a little bit bigger here and gets a little tight. Something I'm concerned about, hmm, I don't think so. Don't think that it really needs a ton of adjustment. Um, but yeah, definitely a little bit tighter here than around here, but the hood looks really well put together, nice and flat, not sticking up in the front. Really, really excited to see that. Now, if you guys know and have been following out of spec detailing at all, I have a Tesla Model 3 long range, same configuration, white, white seats, looks almost identical to this, but it's not a performance. Now, on my car, I've always had issues with my tow hook, and I'm happy to say on here, this tow hook looks like it is properly aligned, looking sharp. You also may notice something a little bit different here on the front end, no parking sensors. I honestly, from a detailer's eye, love the look of this. It looks so sleek, and my dad's already said, you know, I really don't mind it. He's got, you know, an Audi that doesn't even have a backup camera, so this having a good backup camera situation and no sensors, really not that big of a deal for him. I think we start relying on these things quite a bit and it can get you know to the point where we just get spoiled if you will but do i wish tesla had these yes i do i think they've cheaped out a little bit on that but let's keep diving in here quarter panel alignment here to this a pillar that goes all the way around bang on look at how this door looks down here super nice and tidy guys i gotta be honest we looked at this quite a bit um, when he actually picked the car up really, really impressed with the fit and finish. There's a few things here and there, we're gonna go through all of that, but very, very impressed. Um, all the moldings here look really nice and tidy. I would say that this one is ever so slightly popped up a bit, um, being a little nitpicky, but that's what we're here to do. Back here, same situation. This is a little bit lower, um, but still pretty darn nice. Now this panel has always been tricky back here for Tesla. Um, this whole trunk lid. So this is the automatic one, earlier Model 3s. This was just a manual hydraulic here. Um, yeah, it's always been quite tricky. And I've actually seen where these can shatter the rear glass once they start moving around. Um, this one looks decent. And this would, I would say, would be probably the worst panel gap that I've actually seen on the car. And that is right here. Gets really tight here and then definitely comes down and has a little bit wider gap. Now on the other side, it looks more consistent, but you can see just right in here how tight that is. A Little bit wider gap here, but still the alignment looks 
pretty darn good. That's being very nitpicky, but I would say it could use a little bit of adjustment there. Now coming back around on this side, let's just take a look. So you can see quite a bit bigger gap here. This is really how it should look. So maybe that side does need a little bit of that adjustment, but overall pretty good. Again, the doors on this thing, panel alignment, just they are getting this car nailed down. I actually had a Model Y performance that I did a similar one on, Fremont built car just like this one, and I was actually very impressed overall. You know, a few nitpicks here and there, but that's every car. We've got our Volkswagen ID4 back there. It's a very well built car. But again, still a few things that come up on all cars. Guys, I have detailed almost 500 cars now at this point, and that's not just a quick wash on them, that's full in-depth paint correction, ceramic coatings. I am spending a lot of time up close with these cars, seeing the fit and finish of them. And yeah, gotta say, I'm pretty darn impressed so far with this car. You know, back here immediately, we'll talk more on the paint later, but I do see a difference here. And this is exactly the same to my Model 3 dual motor in the pearl white. This bumper is 100% a different color than this quarter panel. Now, the lighting in here, as you guys can see, I've got the hex grid lights. I've also got a different, more yellow um, color temperature around the mezzanine here and in here. What this allows me to do is really see differences in paint, point out defects, that's the whole purpose of it. This outside you really don't see, but I will just say, 100% different color. My car is exactly the same way. Now back here, again, panel alignment nice and tidy around here. Looks extremely even, exactly what we expect. A lot of times, um, especially charge ports, Model 3 has had some issues. I've seen this on Model Y as well. Happy to say this one looks pretty darn good. Very consistent gapping all the way around there, as well as the tail lights. Tail lights have been always tricky with Tesla, and I've seen it multiple, multiple times with um, you know them just hanging out. And on the other side here, really, really good. Another thing here on the Model 3s, we've got a carbon fiber spoiler that comes from factory. This one looks almost put on freaking perfect, which I'm happy to say, because a lot of the times you see this edge come up, pop up here, even from factory. So really looking good there, very, very happy. Over here on the passenger side, let's just kind of take a quick look at everything. So up here, glass looks nice and straight. Nothing that I'm, I've seen you know, from like Rivian where the glass is sticking up on either side. Same here on the front. Everything is nice and tidy. Very, very happy with that. But down here on the doors, really good panel alignment all the way down. Nothing sticks out to me really. And I am very, very impressed here to be quite honest. Again, really nice panel alignment here. It looks like a well-built car, and that is not something that Tesla has always, um, you know, had. Early Model S's had, you know, tons of issues. They were really, really not built well. And I gotta say, to be honest, the new Model S, so Kyle's got a Model S Plaid, you know, that car has been through an accident, but that thing creaks and rattles like crazy. We've got issues with, you know, panels like this where the rubber's sticking up like crazy. Uh, just, you don't get the impression that it's a well-built car. I can't say the same for this. I'm pretty blown away with this car, to be absolutely frank. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would give this probably like a nine and a half out of 10 on fit and finish as far as the exterior. We're gonna do the interior separately and look at it but really, really enthused with how nice this car is put together. This feels like a premium car, in my opinion, at least, and I would say well worth the $54,990 that it is. Um, now, I do wanna make one quick note that I forgot here on the back, this dual motor badge back here. It is so crooked and it's driving me nuts. Now, we're gonna be replacing these badges here with um, satin black to match the kind of rest of the car. I really wish Tesla would make these a uh, factory option. But yeah, this badge definitely, the right side is up more than, uh, than the left. But we'll get that fixed when we re-put on the badge. But overall, exterior fit and finish, yeah, I'm really, really blown away. Like all the door handles feel really nice and tight in here. I mean, what a nice job Tesla has done on the outside of the vehicle. Now let's jump inside and see how we're looking. I wanna make a quick note on these door handles. Now, they feel very different. Both Kyle and I, when we picked this car up yesterday, we're like, 
Okay, they've done some different stuff with the door handles here. And I think that's the crazy thing about Tesla. They don't wait for a new model year to introduce new parts, new um, things. Like this car has a different 12 volt battery than my car. It's got a different processor in the actual, um, you know, screen and computer. But door handles, this feels totally different. We've been in and out of Model 3s for, you know, years. Kyle's been in a lot more than I have, but he popped this door open. He goes, whoa, that feels really nice. And speaking on that, door shut super nice, windows pop up very, very quickly. Again, getting that impression that Tesla is really starting to get these cars dialed in. Model 3 and Model Y, of course, are their, their big money makers. So they're producing a lot more of these than Model S's and Model X's and really, really quite impressed. So we do have the dual pane glass here. Sorry, the camera is going to have a hard time focusing. Um, I would say now driving this car down the road, you always have wind noise in these cars just because we've got frameless glass. It's an electric car. You hear a lot more tire noise and wind noise. I would say that's probably one of the biggest drawbacks, but I will say so far we've driven this car, you know, down I-25 over some really bumpy normal Colorado roads here and it is tight inside. Like you don't hear a squeak, you don't hear a rattle, but you definitely do hear some wind noise. I think that has to do with a little bit of the glass up here, as well as how they do their windows. You know, I love frameless windows, but having a full framed window definitely sounds a lot better. This car over here is a prime example of that. You don't have frameless windows and it is a lot quieter, like substantially quieter. So I would say that's one of the biggest negatives with this car, but I've had some time to look through the interior here and again, blown away. Everything feels so well put together. To be quite honest with you, I haven't seen much of anything that I go, ooh, that's a little weird. And I would say that's the same with my Model 3 dual motor. Um, interior feels really nice. All the stitching here is really nice and tidy, really straight. I mean, there's not a ton of accent stitching. I think this is like the only thing um, other than here on on the uh, center console, maybe actually seeing a little bit of wavering here as I'm looking on the armrest, but still pretty darn decent. Now in here, so we've obviously got the white plastic finish here with the aluminum here. Everything, again, really nice and tidy. Yeah, okay, so this is kind of bugging me here. I can definitely see that now, but yeah. Overall, really good. We have taken away still no lumbar support over here on passenger seat. I still think these are one of the best seats in the business. And if you guys are considering white seats, absolutely go for it. I'll leave a link in the description to a, a video talking about these white seats. In my detailing impression, they are a lot easier to take care of than the black seats. I know crazy, they do show dirt, but they're so easy to clean, just love it. Stitching on all the seats looks really, really good. Let's hop here in the back seat. Again, I love how these doors feel. It almost feels like it really pops it out a lot quicker than my car. And um, Kyle made the same note on that as well. So everything back here, really nice and tidy. Another point I just wanna you know, point out if you do have a Model 3, make sure you put your seat belt here because when you do fold these seats down, it'll leave an impression here. I wish they would fix that. That seems like a little bit of a design flaw in my opinion, but nonetheless, really, really good. All the, um, you know, kick plates down here, all looks nice and tidy. Doors feel really nice. I still love this vegan leather. I think it's just a fantastic material. Let's hop over here to the driver's side and everything looking nice and tidy. We're gonna be coating these seats. Again, I'll leave links in the description below so you can go check out those videos as well. Steering wheel feels really nice and tidy. All the stitching up here feels extremely good. We've actually got an issue with our Volkswagen where the leather is kind of peeling up here on one of the kind of highest prone areas. So um, really happy to say this thing feels really, really nice. Over here, again, we've got a little bit of this droop here on that um, center console, but nothing huge. You're not gonna see that all the time, I would say, unless you look at it every time like I would, because I'm OCD and weird. Um, <clears throat> again, door thunk feels really nice. Now back here, I'll consider this part of the interior. This looks a little weird, and tell me what you think. It kind of pops up and then goes again. My car is a lot smoother um, 
than this particular one, but nonetheless feels pretty decent. Obviously back here, we've got ample storage. We've already got the all weather mats that my dad pre-ordered for this thing. But yeah, I would say interior wise as well, fit and finish really, really, really nice. Um, do want to make a quick note. These cars do come with the J1772 adapter. It was back here. And also what I love that Tesla does is under here, they leave your front plate. They don't put it on. That is one of the greatest things ever. I love it. And also notice how smooth that goes down. So may have to keep an eye on that for the future. I know Tesla will warranty that if one of those struts kind of breaks or starts to not work as well. But it definitely seems to me as it comes up and it kind of stops and comes back up. So it kind of pulses. Um, other than that, really, really blown away with the interior as well. So let's start, let's take some paint readings and then we'll turn off the lights here, get the scan grips out, see the current state of the vehicle. So now let's start and get into the really nerdy detailing stuff as far as paint. Let's dive deep into this, talk about, you know, what kind of scratches does this thing come on? or come with actually and have, does it have paint nibs? Does it have sanding marks? What's the current state of the paint looking like? Now, before we do that, I wanna talk quickly about this car during delivery. So Tesla, when you are purchasing a car, you know, they actually text you back and forth and say, okay, your car is gonna be ready here. Um, it needs to go through the PDI, which is typically unlocking all of the, the software. I don't exactly know how Tesla does it. I'm speaking from experience with cars like Volkswagen and Audi since I worked with a dealership over in Fort Collins. Um, but typically they bring the cars in and they like to wash them. Why do they do that? Well, they need to inspect the cars too to make sure that you know the car didn't get hit or something during transport. It doesn't have scratches on it from transport. So we asked them, hey, can you guys please not wash this? You know, we own a detail shop. I would really like to have the car just as is, don't wash it. And they actually denied um, us the ability to do that. They said, you know, you have to understand our policy is to wash these things so we can take a look at it. What's interesting is Kyle, with when he took delivery of his Model S Plaid, he actually did not have it washed. Um, so it's kind of strange. I don't know. It may have been a new policy that they implemented. Is it the worst thing? I don't know. We'll find out when we get in there with the scan grips. I do understand where they're coming from with that because, you know, they need to also ensure that the car left in the condition that it was supposed to, right? So you can't come back and, you know, say, oh, there was a huge scratch here. And now you guys are liable and have to repaint it. I understand that. Now, when we took delivery of our Volkswagen ID4, we're friends of the dealership over in Fort Collins, Ed Carroll Motor Company. And I said, leave all the plastic on this thing. Don't wash it. I just want to see it in as pure, raw, naked form. And they did that. They also didn't drill a front plate, which I love. Tesla doesn't even do that. So I really, really like that. But let's jump in here and talk paint readings. So I've got a paint gauge over here and let me explain a little what this does while it's turning on. So this bad boy reads the thickness of the paint. What this does is reads from the metal to the top of the paint. So in there you have some primer, you have your actual color coat. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because the white Model 3s are a little bit different than the rest of them. And then you have clear coat, which is the, the actual stuff we can actually polish and that we want to really protect. But let's jump in here. I'm taking this reading in mils and let's see how this goes. So 8.77 mils. So what I'll tell you is most cars like our Volkswagen ID4 is between four to five mils. That's pretty typical. So you would immediately think, okay, well this has a lot of paint, right? That's good. Yes and no. Now with these pearl white cars, they do multiple layers of paint to get this pearl effect in it. So every time I've seen a white Model 3, Model S, Model Y, they are always thicker than the rest of the cars. Let's come here in the center. What I'm looking for is consistency, right? So I don't wanna see like eight mils and four mils in an area. Um, you know, if you guys go back and watch any of the build quality videos I've done, you'll realize that even cars like Audis and Porsches and things like that are not always exactly consistent. These panels are, you know, painted by machine and they are absolutely not the most consistent thing. We've got eight over here. So, so far the hood, looking very consistent. A little bit lower here down at the bottom. Um, 
Actually, I just wanted to make a quick note that popped in my head. If you guys remember the lucid air that we had in here that had no paint up here. I couldn't even polish the darn thing, just crazy. Let's check out the um, driver's side fender, eight mils. Eight mils, nice and consistent, really good there. Wow, really impressed so far. Let's come up here on this top piece, eight mils. Holy smokes, Tesla, really liking this. Yep. So you saw a little bit of variation here. Um, that's very, very common. Obviously these contoured areas hold paint a little differently, but I would say, wow, okay, so far, I'm very impressed actually. It's important to know, I didn't wash this car, so if you see a little dirt and grime, the car was actually delivered quite clean. I was decently impressed. Um, now again, I really wish they wouldn't have washed it, but I do understand the need to do so. Let's check here on the door. Six mils, so actually a little bit lower in that area. Okay, so that panel is a little less consistent. Definitely, I love having a lot of paint right here because this area gets scratched up. Let's try the center of the door here. And then the trunk, let's see how this is looking, okay. Great. Ooh, really low there, okay. So that's interesting and actually as I'm looking at this, Look at the texture difference in here. Tons of orange peel over here compared to over here. So I'm gonna have to be very um, conscious of this area that it is a little bit lower. I'm also seeing a little blemish here. Let's see if I can get it. There we go, right there. Um, yeah, interesting. So let's come over here and see how this looks on this side. So very low over here compared to center of the hood. Really, really interesting. Five mil difference there, that is huge. So this trunk has some stuff going on. Pretty impressed though, the rest of the vehicle, um, how consistent it is. Also just noticing a little bit of a dust nib right here. And I did see one earlier, I'll pull you guys in and show you that as well. Let's come back here above the dual motor badge. Seven mils, eight mils. So, down here looks pretty good. Just for curiosity, let's go here by the badge. So five, okay, so this area here definitely looks a little bit lower than the rest of the trunk. Now, just for good measure, let's come on the passenger side, check this out. Eight mils. Wow, nice. Okay, about the same as the other side, right? Let's check the center of the door. Wow. Nice. Okay, so my kind of impression detail wise, the whole car looks pretty good, except for the trunk looks a little off. Now, I can't measure the bumpers because they're not metal, um, but yeah, really interesting. And for those of you who are saying, well, this is a cheap gauge, yes it is, but it is calibrated properly. I've done multiple videos with, you know, showing the calibration on it. I definitely believe in the reliability of that. So overall, yeah, pretty darn impressed. I would say the trunk lid's got a few things going on. You can definitely, look at the texture here. That orange peel is, yeah, pretty bad. Over here, very common to what I see. Let me just bring you over here and show you like our Volkswagen ID4. This car has not been paint corrected or anything. It does have a little bit of a layer of protection, but come in here, you can see orange peel everywhere. It's not a Tesla only thing. I love those comments when you guys go, oh, my Ford F-150 has perfect paint on it. Well, I'll leave another link in the description below to see how crazy mismatched paint I saw on a Ford Expedition. Really quite interesting. So lastly, um, before I jump into the paint, actually looking at it, here's a huge dust nib here. So I've seen about three or four on here, pretty common. Um, you know, if you have a Rivian, they go through wet sand those down or just quickly sand them. And unfortunately what you see is like a really nice, no orange peel spot and then orange peel. So it's, it's very apparent and they leave those out. Plenty of videos on this channel again um, regarding that. But let's get the lights turned down. I wanna get my scan grip lights out and see 
what the paint actually looks like under the light. I've turned off the big hex lights up there, turned off the detail bay lights, but left these on. I feel it makes the camera a lot easier to focus with it. So here's our scan grip light, and let's quickly talk about the purpose of this. So what we could do is go outside and look at the car in the sunshine. We could see all the swirls and scratches, if there are any in there, um, and be able to really look at them. What this bad boy does is allows me to move around the vehicle and see light at different positions. So if it's you know noon right now, you're gonna have the sun coming straight down, but you can't really see the side. So this mimics the sun, important thing to note there. So let's just start here and look at how the paint's actually looking here. So what you're gonna look at is look at that light source there. And if you see any scratches around it, that's how the car came. So I do know of this area up here, let me show you here. So look around that light source. See those scratches in there, very common for delivery. Some fingerprints on there as well. Some big scratches right in this area as well. You know, this is very common to what I see, even like on our Volkswagen ID4. I can show you some areas over there because that, that car hasn't been paint corrected um, just for a comparison. White's always really hard to tell, but yeah, definitely some scratches going on here. Quarter panel. Yeah, really, really looking good. I did see some, there you go, see some scratches, white marks maybe there. Now on the tail light, pretty common to have quite a few little scratches in that area. Now back here, ooh, look at that one right there. Right to the right of there, see those scratches? That's where, what we're gonna get all polished out. Definitely some more in this area as well up here. Interesting, okay. I would say so far, pretty common, but like I'm looking at the top of this trunk lid and I can see little to nothing, which I am super, super pleased about. Don't see any weird sanding marks. Uh, oh, that's a fingerprint there. Coming over here, okay, definitely see a, some scratching going on there. Nothing too severe. That probably would come out with a quick polish. Okay, up here, let me see if I can get it. Right there, guys, a little sanding mark. They definitely tried to polish that out, didn't get it out enough, so I'll get that fixed, nothing too severe. Great, okay. Glad we're still able to see this. I think this lighting setup is good. You can definitely see some scratches in the pearl white here. Let's come down here on this fender. Okay, looks pretty good. Round charge port, really common to have scratches on here. And these over time get pretty bad. You can see the top of the light there. Got some water spotting going on. Definitely some scratches. What about the rear bumper? How are we looking down here? A Little harder to see, apologize for that. Looks pretty good though, actually. Um, deep scratch, where'd it go? Something right there and then one going the other way. Okay, some more scratching there. Honestly, decently surprised that this thing looks this good after them, you know, washing it so far. Let's check down the side of the doors here. This is a hot spot and where our Volkswagen definitely has some scratches down the side from them wiping um, or would have some scratches from them wiping it. But I'll, I'll show you a few things over here. Ooh, definitely some scratches here on the door. Some good scuffing right there. Hopefully you can see that and make that out. Great, wow, this fender looks really good here. Also, yep, found one more dust nib right there in the center of the light. Can definitely see it there on the hood here. Let me see if I can get this light to be in the correct position so you can see that dust nib. There you go, right in the center of that bad boy. Again, this is a common thing I see. Headlights actually look extremely nice here. Center of the hood looks really, really good. Some scratching right in this area. There you go. You can kind of see it there. What about the front bumper here? Now I did see earlier, there were quite a few little, there you go, you can really see it there. That may have been them checking something, leaning over the frunk. Really quite nice. Let's look down here on the bumper. Little scratch right in that area. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yep, definitely some stuff going on there. Again, this is one of those reasons, guys, when you get a new car, and I hear this all the time, okay, 
got a new car, it's in perfect condition, right? No, absolutely not. You're seeing all these little scratches on here. Now white is the hardest to see. If this was a black car, you would see all of these so, so easily. Our Volkswagen ID4 shows scratches everywhere. And that was not washed by the dealership. That's just factory going through inspection, things like that, really quite surprising. Let's just check over here for good measure. Definitely some scratches going on here. Now, Model 3s always, because of the door handles, get scratches. You get people, you know, say, you're going out with a few friends, they've never been in a Tesla, they're grabbing up here, touching everything, very common. So, like I said, really good to have enough paint up there. Definitely some deep scratches in that area, but looks, you know, pretty common, to be quite honest with you guys. Um, some deeper scratches over here, for sure. See if I can come in there. There you go. You can see him there and above the door handle. Honestly, really pretty darn impressed to be quite honest with you. Um, that's just for good measure. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on here. Let me just show you a few things on our ID4 here. So this paint, you can see quite a bit more. Let's check that back area here. Look at how deep these scratches are in here and some polishing marks going on. Back here was one of the big polishing areas. You can really see it right there. It just got hammered with a pad. Look at my tail lights on the Volkswagen. Scratches galore. I know, I know. This thing's coming in for full paint correction detail at some point. But just want to make that quick comparison and show you that this is not a Tesla only thing. If you guys go watch all the videos, look at the Rivians, look at other Teslas, um, Audis. Yeah, they all have this kind of stuff. So. My overall impression, totally, totally blown away with the condition of this car. Fit and finish is really good. Few nitpicks here and there, but I have nitpicks with every single car. It definitely have mine with this car. It's nothing different. I'm really, really impressed though, Tesla, with what you guys are doing on Model 3. Again, I've seen multiple Model 3s. They all are starting to get there. They're really, really, really looking good. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments below, did you just purchase a new Model 3 with the new tax credit, the new price reduction? I think these things, especially a white on white spec, are gonna be very commonplace around the country. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next one very, very soon. Bye-bye.